Hi, I'm Arvind, and I'm a product manager on the Azure AD team. In this video, I'll be talking to you about cross-tenant synchronization. Let's take a look at an example scenario. Here, I've got an organization, Contoso. And today, they're using M365 for collaboration, Azure to manage cloud resources, and non-Microsoft apps like Adobe. They've set up single sign-on, and users in this organization are easily able to access the apps that they need. Over time, they acquire a new company, and that company has its own Azure D tenant with its M365 instance, Azure resources, as well as non-Microsoft apps like ServiceNow. Over time, these companies start to function more like one and users, like user 1, needs to access ServiceNow and the other tenant, or user 2 needs to access Adobe and the other tenant. How do you enable these users to access resources across the boundaries of their tenant? Well, today with Azure DB 2 b you can invite these users across tenants and assign them access to the resources that they need. We've heard from you that you want to automate this process and invite users across organizations and keep their data in sync. So when someone changes their name, changes departments, leaves the company, we've heard from you that you want that information to get reflected across all the tenants that that user is collaborating in. So we've invested in cross-tenant synchronization, which automatically invites these B2B users across tenants in your organization, as well as keeps them up to date and removes accounts when someone leaves the company. Let's take a look at the Azure portal and see how this is set up. For this demo, I've got two tenants, ZT Tire Company and Woodgrove. To get this set up, I'll first grab the tenant ID of ZT Tire Company and go into external identities in the Woodgrove tenant. Here I can choose to add the ZT Tire Company and set up the cross and access policy. I've actually added them previously so I can go into the existing policy and click on the cross and synchronization tab. Here, I as the admin of the Woodgrove tenant can say that I trust the ZT Tire Company to sync users into my tenant. Once I've checked this checkbox, I can switch over to the trust settings tab where I'll see a new section for consent prompt. Here, I as the admin of Woodgrove can consent on behalf of end users in my organization so that when they access resources in my tenant for the first time, they won't face a consent prompt. With both those checkboxes selected, I'm actually done on the Woodgrove or target side with setting up cross tenant sync. Now let's switch back to ZT Tires. Here, I can go into External Identities, and I'll set up an outbound policy where I'm also consenting on behalf of users in my tenant, so that way those users don't have to face the consent prompt when they access resources in the Woodgrove tenant. Now that, that initial setup is done, I can go into Cross-Tenant Synchronization and choose to add a new configuration. I'll provide it a name. We'll call it ZT Tire to Woodgrove. And then create the configuration. Now, clicking on the configuration, I can first assign a user or a group to the configuration. Previously, I created a user called Cross Tenant Synchronization. So I'll go ahead and assign them. Now to set up cross tenant sync, I will need the ID of the target tenant. So here I'll grab the Woodgrove tenant ID. And then going into provisioning, specify the target tenant that I'd like to provision accounts into. That's it, no credentials or anything to manage. Once I provided the target tenant, I can save the configuration. And our sync engine will check to make sure that that, that cross and access policy is in place before syncing any users. 
Now going into the attribute mappings, I can define which attributes I want to synchronize. We've got a set of defaults here. You can choose to delete these mappings, add additional attributes. For example, if you need to sync a directory extension, you'll be able to choose that from the list of attributes. I'll bring your attention to two attributes in particular. First is the user type. Most of you are probably using uh, the B2B guest user type today. The default for cross-tenant synchronization will be B2B member to provide that full multi-tenant organization experience so that it feels like these users are just part of one tenant. If you'd like to update existing users from guest to member, you can choose to change the mapping to always and convert existing users. We also have an attribute here called show an address list. By setting this as a constant where the value is true, all users will then light up in the gallery in the target tenant. And you'll be able to search for users across tenants. Now let's move back and transition to on-demand provisioning, where I can quickly provision this in a few seconds and show that user account has been created. Now I'll search for the user cross-tenant synchronization, and in a few seconds that account will get created in the target tenant. Switching over to the target tenant, I can search for the user that I just created. And here we can see that that account was created and they've been created as a type member. As we make updates to this user, as they leave the company, those changes will automatically be reflected across tenants without you having to take action. Switching back to my previous tenant, I could choose to assign additional users to this configuration or more likely assign a group to the configuration. And as users come into the group, they'll get provisioned automatically. As they leave the group, they'll get deprovisioned automatically. And you can assign those users access to all the apps that they need. Thanks for watching this video. And to learn more, you can go to aka.ms slash cross-tenant synchronization. Mm -hmm.